The bus, crammed with new recruits, departed from the military registration and enlistment office. Sarah trailed behind, straining her eyes one last time to catch a glimpse of her beloved Daniel among the soldiers. Just 30 minutes prior, they had shared a tender embrace, with Sarah burying her tear-streaked face in his shoulder. Daniel, how will I manage without you? I didn't anticipate this happening so suddenly. What if something were to happen to you? Sarah had whispered, heart heavy with worry. Sweetheart, Sarah. Time will fly by. I'll complete my service and return before you know it. Nothing will happen to me, I promise. Just don't worry about it. Everyone does their service and returns safe and sound. I'm not going to war. Daniel had reassured her, his voice steady and calming. However, his words offered little comfort as the bus turned a corner and disappeared from sight, leaving Sarah standing alone, lost in her thoughts. After a while, she made her way home, her steps slow and heavy. Time trudged along at a painful pace, one month, then two, then three. Sarah reached out to Daniel occasionally, pouring out her longing and anticipation for his return, updating him briefly on her life. Yet, she withheld a secret. Recently, in the park, she had encountered Jacob, a bold, impulsive young man with a penchant for nighttime car races. Jacob, with his exuberant energy and captivating charm, knew exactly how to leave an impression on girls, and Sarah found herself unwittingly drawn to him. Despite this, she remained committed to Daniel, reminding herself constantly that Jacob was just a friend. Meanwhile, Daniel continued his service, blissfully unaware that he now shared a place in Sarah's heart with a charismatic thrill-seeker who had recently made his presence known in their small town. One fateful day, Aiden, a comrade of Daniel's in the army, received a concise text from his girlfriend, declaring she couldn't wait for him any longer. Consumed by anger, he furiously smashed his phone, crushed the fragments underfoot, and stormed towards the exit of the barracks. Observing this, Daniel swiftly intervened. Hold on. Where do you think you're going? Seeking trouble. There's no way to change her mind now. Plus, why would you want someone who can't even wait a year? You might think it's easy for me to say since I'm not in your shoes, Daniel reasoned. Yeah, you're not the one getting dumped, Aiden retorted, his frustration evident. Sure, I'm not. But I believe in finding the one. Have you found someone special, too? Daniel asked. Yes, and she'll wait for me, no matter what happens. We've been together for three years now, and I trust her completely, Daniel affirmed. You think so, huh? I've known my girl since high school, and I'm telling you, yours won't wait either. They're all the same, Aiden bitterly exclaimed, only to be struck by a sudden idea. Hey, I've got a plan. Message her saying you're hospitalized and can't recover. If she supports you, whether by visiting or simply waiting, then I'll believe that there are actually decent girls out there. What do you think? Scared? You don't trust her, do you? I'm not scared. I'll call her. I'll do it tonight, and you can listen in. But first thing in the morning, I'll call her back and confess that it was all just a test," Daniel decided. That night, when Sarah saw Daniel's name flash on her caller ID, her heart leapt. Daniel, my love. How are you? She eagerly answered. Wait, Sarah, you need to listen carefully. I've been in the hospital for the past two weeks. The doctors are saying I might never walk again. Do you understand? Daniel spoke, his voice laden with false despair. Daniel. Sarah gasped, her voice breaking as she tried to process the shocking news. In that moment, hearing her cry, Daniel's heart sank, and he yearned to reach through the phone, to hold her and confess that it was all just a cruel, thoughtless prank. However, with Aiden standing right by his side, Daniel remained silent and abruptly ended the call. The next morning, their unit was suddenly called for military drills, causing Daniel to completely forget about his intention to call Sarah back. 
All personal phones were left in the barracks. Three days later, upon their return, Daniel noticed several missed calls and messages from Sarah. He hurriedly dialed her number, ready to confess about the dreadful ruse he had played. But before he could say anything, Sarah implored him not to speak. Daniel, I've spent a lot of time thinking, and this is really hard for me to say. I'm young, and right now, you don't need a girlfriend, you need a caretaker. And Daniel, there's another thing. I've met someone else. I hope one day you can find it in your heart to forgive me. I'll never forget you, Daniel, but you need to forget about me, Sarah spoke, her voice heavy with emotion, as she ended the call. Daniel, speechless and unable to confess about the deceit, felt a tap on his shoulder and turned to see Aiden, who had overheard almost everything. I'm really sorry, Daniel. I shouldn't have dared you into that bet, Aiden apologized, his voice filled with genuine remorse. No, it's fine. You actually saved me from falling deeper into this mess. And hey, you were wrong. We'll definitely find decent girls out there, Daniel responded, trying to put on a brave face despite the pain he felt inside. Indeed, that's how it will be. Post-military service, Daniel and Aiden chose to extend their service through a contract. They found themselves in intense, high-stakes situations, relying on each other time and again, forging a bond as strong as brothers. In one fierce skirmish, Daniel showcased exceptional bravery, rescuing Aiden and their platoon leader from a blazing vehicle, which earned him an official commendation. A year on, a severe injury left Daniel temporarily incapacitated. His path to recovery started in the hospital, under the diligent care of Thora, a compassionate nurse. She was instrumental in his rehabilitation, restoring not just his physical strength but also reigniting his belief in the unwavering loyalty one can find in a woman's heart. Their connection deepened, and within a year, they were joyfully married, with Thora expecting twins. Daniel doted on his wife, ensuring she had everything she needed, content in the knowledge that his life was now on a positive trajectory. During this time, Aiden reached out with a business proposition, to start a security agency together. Daniel, eager to support his friend, jumped at the opportunity. In under two years, their venture thrived, and they expanded their services. They also gave back to the community, establishing sports programs for underprivileged children, a noble effort that did not go unnoticed by the local authorities, earning them additional support for their initiatives. One day, inspired by their success, Daniel entertained the idea of opening a sports center in his hometown. After discussing the venture with his business partners, he was ready to return to his family. With a few hours to spare before his flight, he decided to take a stroll through a nearby park, embracing a moment to reminisce about his younger years. As he strolled down one of the park's pathways, Daniel crossed paths with a woman whose face stirred a sense of familiarity. She was maneuvering a wheelchair that cradled a seven-year-old boy. Just after they had passed each other, she paused, spun around, and looked at him in astonishment. Sensing her gaze, Daniel also turned back around. His eyes widened in recognition, it was Sarah. She seemed to stagger slightly as if hit by an invisible force, then turned and began to walk away. Daniel, compelled to speak with her, quickly closed the distance between them. They exchanged greetings, followed by a moment of uncomfortable silence. You recognized me, he noted. Yes, she replied softly. This is your son. Daniel inquired, nodding toward the wheelchair. Yes, my son. His name is Carter, she answered. Daniel bent down to Carter's level, extending his hand. Hey there, Carter. The boy offered a shy handshake, asking, nice to meet you. What's your name? I'm Daniel, uh, um, a friend of your mom's. He found the word, friend, difficult to say for some reason. Let's get you an ice cream. What flavor do you like? Daniel offered before Sarah could respond. He took control of the wheelchair, guiding them toward the nearest street cafe. After placing their orders, 
he turned his attention back to Sarah while Carter happily enjoyed his treat. So, how have you been, he asked gently. As you can see, Sarah responded, her voice laden with a touch of sorrow as she adjusted the collar of her modest shirt. And you? You look well. You're back on your feet, she noted. I am, and I'm really sorry about that phone call. It was a terrible joke, Daniel apologized sincerely. I know. Your mother told me later on, but by then it was too late. I was already pregnant, she revealed, her eyes meeting his with a mixture of sadness and acceptance. I never tied the knot with Jacob. He had numerous women in his life, just like me. However, he did show up when Carter was born, bearing gifts, before vanishing once again. He'd visit annually. But everything changed when Carter turned five, Jacob took him on a car ride, and they ended up in an accident just outside the city. Jacob walked away nearly unscathed, but Carter, he was left disabled. Jacob disappeared from our lives after that. What do the doctors say? Is there anything that can be done? Daniel inquired, concern lacing his words. There are options, of course. We're on a waiting list for a surgery, but the funds for an operation abroad are just, it's out of our reach, Sarah replied, her voice quivering with the strain of her situation. She turned to Carter, forcing a smile, sweetie, are you done? We should head home. And Daniel, she added, her gaze meeting his, please forgive me, and I wish you nothing but happiness. Daniel turned back to Carter, hey buddy, what's your favorite thing to play with? Airplanes. I always wanted to be a pilot, Carter shared with a bright gleam in his eyes. And a pilot you will be, Carter. I'm sure of it, Daniel affirmed, though his eyes lingered sadly on Sarah as she and her son prepared to leave. A month passed. One day, a letter arrived for Sarah, its content so unexpected that she needed a moment to fully grasp its meaning. The letter was an invitation for Carter to undergo a medical evaluation at a clinic in Israel, all expenses paid. Sarah wept openly, overwhelmed by gratitude and relief. Six months later, they returned, Carter walking unaided, albeit with the support of light crutches he wouldn't need for much longer. Sarah had her suspicions about who was responsible for this miracle, but without an address or phone number, she couldn't express her thanks. A week after their return, a package arrived for Carter. Inside, he discovered a large, remote-controlled airplane, and beneath it, a postcard adorned with a real airplane and a beautifully handwritten message, Good luck to you, pilot.